Welcome back trainers and in this video we're going to be going over Shadow Legendary Pokemon and what you can expect in the future and this could kind of align with you on what you should be investing in, what you want to power up. So let's go ahead and go over this. All right, so taking a look at the Shadow Legendaries that I do have right now and then we're going to go over what we can expect next because they're kind of going in order of what we've been getting here. So first one released was going to be Shadow Articuno, then Shadow Zapdos, then Shadow Moltres, Shadow Raikou, Entei, Suicune, and then Mewtwo, Ho-Oh, Lugia, or I should say I got uh, Ho-Oh first, then Lugia, apparently. And then we have Latias, Latios, Registeel, Regi Ice, and Regirock. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the legendaries that we can expect to be Shadow next. All right, so we've gotten Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres, Mewtwo, Raikou, Entei, Suicune, Lugia, Ho-Oh, Regirock, Regiice, Registeel, Latios, Latias, what's next? Well, there's plenty on the list here, and when we go beyond that, nothing has received a Shadow form as far as legendaries are concerned. But up next, apparently after Regirock, now I can't say this is for certain because they do kind of mix it up a lot. So what we can expect though, for the next new Shadow Legendary, that is gonna be potentially Kyogre and Groudon. Oh yeah, baby. And then after that is gonna be Rayquaza. Now Rayquaza is gonna be getting a Mega and you're probably gonna just wanna go with your 100 Rayquaza's non-Shadows. We don't have it yet, but if you're trying to save off and hold off for a Shadow Rayquaza, you may want to reconsider because, you know, we, we're we going to have a long time before that happens. And I still feel like Shadow Rayquaza is not going to be doing as good as the Mega Rayquaza is going to be. So Shadow, Kyogre, and Groudon, though, we need to talk about those because when they are released, gosh dang, they are going to be absolutely amazing. So Kyogre's Waterfall damage is already stupid strong, right? Imagine it as a shadow. And then of course the Surf. And let's not even talk about its nuke moves. Those are just gonna be catastrophically strong, right? So that is gonna be crazy. Even going up against dragons, your Waterfall damage is going to be incredible, okay? And then talking about Kyogre, oh my goodness, or Groudon, Groudon. That thing is gonna be an absolute beast. With Precipice Blades, it'll pretty much one-shot everything. Uh, of course, not Flyers. To, you know, it's not going to do that. But your Fire Punch at that point is going to be doing so much, you're going to be able to handle a lot more. Now, granted, Shadow Pokemon are going to be taking, what, 20% more damage and then giving 20% more damage as well. So you will be taking more as far as damage is concerned, and you will be going down faster. But gosh, damn, the damage is going to be incredible. Think about Rayquaza, Shadow. Yes, the son of a gun's gonna be going down faster than a paper house in a windstorm, okay? But the damage that is gonna be performing and outputting with Dragon Tail and Breaking Swipe and, I don't know, maybe uh, Hurricane if you get that off, is going to be absolutely insane. And then we do have Utsi, Mesprit, and Azelf, which, you know, <sighs> I mean, Utsi could probably do something. As far as the other ones, I'm not really interested whatsoever. Now we're getting into the juicy stuff here. Dialga's Shadow is not going to be a joke. Okay, now that, that's the one you're going to want to use, I don't know, all of your rod rocket radars on, or at least your Giovanni rocket radars on to catch, to get the best one as possible, or just multiple, I don't know, because this thing is going to be so damn good. Dialga is literally arguably one of the best, the best in Master League. Uh, and as a shadow, with its typing that it has already, pretty much neutral to a lot of stuff already, it is going to be absolutely just devastatingly strong with Dragon Breath. And then we do have Palkia, which in its own right is amazing as well. And you will be doing extreme amounts of damage with Dragon Tail on that thing. And then we do have Heatran, which is also going to be a very interesting one. I don't know about Regigigas, that's going to be hot garbage. Now this one is going to be interesting because what have we talked about in the shadows that you want to invest in? A lot of them could be tanks. I, I mean, the tankier Pokemon that are can be shadow, like, uh, I don't know, Lapras, are absolutely amazing because they've already got that stat product in bulk to them, so they're just going to be that much better. 
and they're not really going to be going down, you know, they're going to go down faster than they would initially as a shadow, but they're still going to be able to take the hits. All right, so Giratina uh, Altered Form is not going to be a joke. That's the one you're going to want as shadow. That and Dialga. Uh, since its damage is going to be shot through the roof 20% more, you're going to be doing that much more, and you're going to have the bulk to go along with it. Shadow Cresselia. Another one of these bulky Pokemon that is going to potentially just be nuts as far as the shadow damage is concerned. Shadow Swords of Justice are going to be pretty good as well. Now, unfortunately, Terrakion doesn't have the viability that um, Kabalion or Verizion does have, do have, but at least, you know, whatever. It is going to be doing a lot of rock damage for raids for sure. So yeah, Terrakion is going to be decent. Kabalion is going to be amazing. Verizion also amazing. And then moving past the Tornadus, Thunderous, I don't really care about those. I don't think they're going to do too well. Reshiram, another shadow that's going to be absolutely phenomenal, as well as Zekrom. Uh, then Landorus, Theron form, if that ever gets a shadow, which I do believe it will, it's a squishy Pokemon. Um, you will be hitting like an absolute truck. You will be hitting like an absolute semi. You will be hitting like a rocket ship with the power of all the thrusts. You're just going to just knock everything out. But you're also not going to be able to take a hit anymore. Shadow Kyurem could be interesting. We still need Kyurem White and Kyurem Black, which have not been introduced yet. And I do believe that this is, well, it's to my knowledge that we're going to get a form change button for this thing. Like Hoopa Unbound. And then we have Xerneas. Another potential candidate for a shadow, which is going to be amazing, uh, but I don't have too much stock in that. Yveltal, another pretty good one because it's very spammy with its charge moves. Another squishy Pokemon, and especially in its shadow form, but my gosh, you're going to be pressured to pretty much shield anything that is thrown at you if you're going up against that shadow. Tapu Koko, um, not really feeling that one too much. Tapu Le Lele, Tapu Bull, Bulu. <laughs> I don't like these. I like Tapu Finn. That was all right. That's going to be a good shadow for sure. No, no Master League products here, but definitely interesting for the Ultra League and potentially Great League as well. Cosmog and Sigalio. I don't even want to. I don't even want to get into that because we don't know when the hell the. We don't even have these son of a guns in raids yet. So who knows when the going to get a shadow for this? But um, Sigalio is a shadow. Pretty cool. Now we're getting to another juicy one here. Zacian Shadow will be nasty. You do not one-shot Dialga right now with close combat, right? But as a shadow, you will be one-shotting that son of a gun. So a lot of people like to let that first close combat go, and then you're not going to necessarily be able to farm them down with your quick move, and then it can kind of bait you out, or not really bait you, hit you an iron head, right? S situational thing there. But with close combat, you're going to be knocking them out one shot. And then your play rough wild charge, obviously going to be doing more as well. So yeah, definitely another awesome one. Zamazenta, I think is a underrated Pokemon. And at this point, since they removed the unlimited remote raids, whenever they do bring this back at this point, I do not see myself maxing this out. I, it's as simple as that. I'm, I, I, I mean, <laughs> when am I going to go around and find people in Anchorage to play? I guess we can do that, but... I don't know. Only time will tell. This whole remote raid thing, I know, is so freaking annoying. And now we're getting into things like, it's just kind of like, well, seven years we'll see this shadow, right? Reggie, uh, Eleki, right? I don't know. Uh, well, we'll see. The, the, that one has decent moves, I guess. Uh, Reggie Drago is a garbage thing, so that's the, that's the end of the line here. But as far as the Pokemon that I am most anticipating here, I'm going to have to definitely say Dialga. Kyogre and Groudon, 100%. And... Zacian. My number one excited Shadow Form Pokemon is probably going to be... Groudon. Yeah, I love my Groudon. That thing's amazing. But I have to say, the one that is going to be pursued the most, that is going to be... Where people are going to probably use their most Giovanni radars on is going to be... Dialga Shadow. That thing is just going to be an absolute complete monster. It's already amazing with Dragon and Steel typing. And then as a Shadow form, it's over. It is 
absolutely over. And vice versa, you don't one shot Zacian with an iron head, right? But you will one shot it with iron head as a shadow. So yeah, that, that's just gonna be great. And don't even talk about Draco Meteor. That thing is, I mean, if you're a fairy, yeah, it will, I mean, I remember getting hit by a Dragonite Shadow Draco Meteor on my Zacian, and it did like a little less than half, like a quarter. So there's still a little bit of trouble there in Paradise for the dragons, but looking pretty good otherwise. There you have it, folks. Just wanted to show you a little bit of the future here. I don't know what you want to prepare for. This is another reason why I, well, not anymore. I can't go hard on the raids anymore to accumulate the XL candies because I can't get unlimited remote raid invites. But another thing that I advocate for is to make sure you have enough candies for your initial and then a shadow as well. Now, I know that it's a massive thing to ask for when it comes down to raiding, all right? It's not like your average Pokemon or your community day Pokemon where you can just go out there and grind your butt off and just catch a whole bunch and then save up like that. You gotta spend a crap load of money on these son of a guns before you can actually do that. So a little bit of an unrealistic thing. So the way you can approach it is basically say, okay, let's see, compare the shadow to the non-shadow. Or, I mean, I was gonna say, do, the, do they have an ev mega evolution? The only one that does on this list here is what, Rayquaza? And that's it, yeah. That's the only legendary that we have that's a mega four. Or Mewtwo as well. Mewtwo as well. Oh, never mind. Mewtwo X and Y. That's another one too. Never mind. But yeah, it's pretty exciting stuff. Just wanted to break that down. And not only that, we have other things. I mean, uh, I'm about to just give out video ideas right now. So we'll keep my mouth shut and we'll talk about it another time. But hey, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. Turn notifications on. And by the way, they did announce Squirrel Community Day Makeup Day. We'll go over that in another video. Yeah. The makeup day for the makeup day. Well, not quite. It's a makeup day for the initial. I didn't personally have a problem, but they're just giving it to everybody. And it is a full community day like it initially was. Anyways, thank you for watching. If you can give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you need to turn notifications on, and I'll be catching you all next time. Take care.